right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation. We got a special edition of the Knicks Fan TV. It is our game of the week preview. Knicks head down to Orlando for the first game against the young Orlando Magic man. And joining us today, returning to the show, he covers the Orlando Magic for Bally Sports Florida. Also the host of the hottest basketball podcast out there right now, the Knuckleheads Podcast. Quentin Richardson returns to the show Q, good morning, man. How you feeling, bro? Man, chilling, CP. Appreciate you having me on. You know, I'll be seeing you out here doing your thing. Man, I'm, I'm trying to get like you in this media game, man. Just working hard daily. But, you know, like I said, I definitely appreciate your support. And uh, and, and for you to join us today, man, definitely appreciate it. No doubt. All love. Now, I see you, man. You showing up on, on, on TV not wearing suits and carrying on. I don't know. Hey, I see you. Booted, Level up. Man. Level up. Booted, you know? So, you know, just, just trying to be versatile in this thing, man. I got my own I thing going in. And then when I got to take it on the road, you know, take it on the road. So it's, it's right. fun. You know, all part of the journey. All, all very fun. But, you know, um, I mean, talk about yourself in the media game because Knuckleheads is, is going strong. Like I said, the best basketball podcast out there. You're doing Bally Sports Florida. You got Hooper Vision on, on NBA TV and, and the uh, NBA property. So, I mean, talk about your journey in the media game and, and how you've been liking it. Man, I, I like I really probably in the last year or so, like finally come to grips like I am media or whatever. I, I always identify from I'm a player, I'm a hooper. Right. Like <laughs> I'm just privileged to be doing these things and in this space. But you know, I come to come to terms, I'm media or whatever, but I enjoy it, man. Like like you say, the, the different things I get a chance to do, but from from the knuckleheads, which is like you say, it's 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 me and D's own thing, it's our thing, and we do it how we want. But then to be able to be part of the uh, Orlando Magic broadcast team with Bally's, man, my teammate, Dante Marcatelli, Coach Brian Hill is is unreal. Get to work with Nick Anderson, Bo Outlaw, those guys, and kick it. And then with Hooper Vision, you know, this, that's literally something that we do. We we call the games, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We broadcast and call the games. And the best part of that is that I really do it with my bros, you know what I'm saying? Like D. Right. Wright, Nate Robinson, them are really dudes that I consider fam, you know what I'm saying? And we got crazy history with so it's like when we sitting there it's really like you seeing us sitting there kicking it how we would kick it yeah. watch a game then i do the uh, the clipper vision baller vision is what mm -hmm. the la clippers have so mm -hmm. there i could be on there with d miles i might be on there with baron davis i might be on there with uh craig smith darren collis another day catino and it's just like a different variety but it's still the same thing. And it's like, I'm doing it from right where you see me and I'm sitting at the crib. When I do Hooper vision, when I do baller vision, when I do uh, a lot of this stuff is from the crib. You know, I got to go to the actual arena for the for the uh, magic thing and uh, we travel for knuckleheads. But it's, it's love, man. I get to do all of these things and still be right there in basketball. But the best part, I don't take time away from my kids and my family. I walk out this room and I turn right back into dad. Before I come in this room, I'm dead. So it's like, it's, it's, it's love, man. Now, that's a beautiful thing. It's great balance for you because, as you said, you could do it remotely. And then what I like about Hoop Provision in particular is that, you know, you guys are coming from a player's perspective. Yep. So it's great because you're calling the game, you're breaking it down, and then the storytelling is also great. So it adds a different dimension than the traditional broadcast. So I definitely I have, appreciate that. I have a question. Did you happen to see the game we had on Hoop Provision? This is good for the Knicks fans anyway, yeah. if you saw it or not, but, like, so, like I said, it's me, D. Wright, and Nate. And mm. the best part, another good thing about doing a Hooper vision with the NBA is we have the whole entire NBA vault. Right. We can call on any clip, any video ever. Yeah. So, we've long, we talked about it on a podcast with Nate. We talked about it a lot of different times with Nate. Nate's very first possession ever. Like, CP, just understand when I say ever, I mean ever. Like, we playing a preseason game out in Connecticut, Mohegan Sun. Mm -hmm. We're playing against then the New Jersey Nets. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We and we're coached by Larry Brown, bro. Larry freaking <laughs> Brown is our coach. <laughs> and you do this. This is this is Nate's first ever time. He gets subbed into the game. It was like a timeout. I don't know what happened. It's they the, the, the Nets have the ball. Timeout. Mm -hmm. Nate subs in the game. Soon as they like, soon as the play started, throw the ball in, whatever happened. Turnover. It's a transition. Mm -hmm. Nate's, this is the first time in the history of a real basketball game, whether it's preseason or anything, Nate's very first time getting on the court, the first time he gets the ball and saying he's on a fast break. He's on a fast break, and he decides that he's going to go show time. He's like, he didn't even realize that 
First of all, hard ass playing, hustling ass <laughs> Richard Jefferson was was hulking him. He was oh, right there. He yeah. wasn't even far, but Nate was too busy in his own world. He didn't realize that he was that close. <laughs> Nate proceeded to like try and throw it off the board and go get it. Man, Richard Jefferson, he he did foul him, but yeah. nobody's gonna make that call because what the hell are you doing, rookie? Right, and he right. turn over, fall down. He laid there for a minute like he was dead. And then, like, Coach Brown, as soon as Coach Brown started coming over there, he popped up like the Undertaker just went straight to the bench. <laughs> straight and to the bench. Was getting... Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you, you cannot make this up. That that was your very first thing you ever did? Bro, Nate, Nate, Nate was a treasure, man. What was the game when Nate, uh, when he shot it in the wrong basket? It was a dead play. But when he shot it in the wrong Left-handed, basket. Left-handed, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Nate, Nate was a treasure, man. The Nate days were funny, man. I, I Nate the great, you know, boy. Yeah, man. I hope he's doing well from a health standpoint uh, as well. Yeah. And shout out to Nate Robinson, man. Definitely shout out to Rick, Nate Robinson. What's your, you know, like when, when you, you you go into the magic, doing the magic games, or you doing knuckleheads? Like, what, what's your prep work like? You know, when you prepare for the interviews, or you, or you prepare for games? Man, it's it's with, with the the. It's totally different. Night and day with the knuckleheads, you know what I'm saying? We we got a great, you know, over at the Players Tribune, our whole team that, that, that helps us with the research and the questions and all that. And it's kind of like come together over the years because in the beginning it was kind of they were here, we were here. And then it was like as we worked together, we kind of came and now we're in the same place. We don't have to cross out questions no more. They know the type of stuff that we will and we won't ask. And it's like the 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 stuff that they find and dig up be really great and then it's always cool because like we know an abundance of stuff on our own so it's like mm-hmm. you know that that night before me and me and D Miles we'll hang out or, or before earlier in that day we'll talk about different things and then we'll set everything up and then we always keep a few few things to ourselves so it catch him off guard or he catch me off guard and it's a real reaction and stuff like that mm-hmm. but when I go to the Magic games man it's like it's almost cheating. It's easy. All I, as long as I've seen the game, CP, I don't mm. need anything. Like, you know, yeah. they're, they're always like, when you get to the game, you've seen it. They're going to have pamphlets this thick with stats right. and little little nuggets. and So all of that is right there. Yeah. But for me, it's really about, did you see the game? Because right. if I've seen the game, I don't, I, whatever we, wherever we're going to go, I can go there. I can talk mm. about where, as long as I've seen the game, that's, that's really my prep, my homework for the, for when I work at Bally's and do things like that, because being a player, I know the plays. I know different things. As long as I saw the game, I can talk about anything that happened, and that's the biggest thing for me. I just need to watch the game. That's what's up, man. And once again, we're talking to Quentin Richardson of the Knuckleheads podcast, former Nick, of course, salute to Knicks Nation. Quentin also covers the magic for Bally Sports Florida. And Q on these magic, man, at the time of this recording, 22 and 32 on the campaign. Uh, young, exciting team. Had some statement yeah. wins this this year. They beat the world champion Warriors twice. Beat Hold them. on, let me talk. Let me, let me time you out one time. Okay, <laughs> when you start bringing up the magic, I got to say, Bowl. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You keep on going. You keep yeah, on we gotta going, get it. We gotta get it on bowl too, man. But yeah. couple signature wins of Phoenix, Dallas, Golden State twice, man. Give me your thoughts on this team. Man, I love this young team, man. I think I think uh, Coach Mosey is doing an unbelievable job, man. He he's he's got these young guys competing. They have an identity. Uh, I feel like they respond to him. And I and I like I think I think that you know Jeff 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 Weltman and them have done a great job putting this team together, man. The pieces we've got, you know, we got a lot of interchangeable guys. You see us playing some positionless basketball when we had Fultz and, and Anthony Hurt earlier in the season. We had Franz handling the point, Paolo initiating. So I, I love the way they play, man. They compete, they play hard, they don't back down. And like I said, we got a lot of young talent and we just starting to get healthy. I think, when, you know, when we get at our full health and we come back next year and we add something to do whatever, I think we're going to be that much better, man. Because this year was a lot of trial and error and filling in the spots and next man up. We had a lot of guys down when we started the first uh, yeah. first half of the season. Yeah, injury bug definitely hit him. Uh, you, we got to start with, with, with Paolo, man. When I look at this rookie... And I was in Vegas in summer league, got a chance to see him, you know, three level score, the explosiveness, the burst, um, the cerebral, you know, just just ready to go from day one. And yeah. in certain games, dominating his matchups, man. Did, did that surprise you with him coming in? It did. I didn't I, I I was unaware that he was that he had a handle in a in a in a in a mid-range jump. I didn't think I didn't know that he could create for himself that way. Right, and he really right. and then like the thing that I think that really shows me, like, yo, this kid is a bucket, 
is that he gets to that foul line, man. Like, you know, when you can consistently get to the foul line, and he's a he's a he's an excellent free throw shooter. That's that's yeah. huge too. But the fact that he consistently gets there and to be a rookie, getting that call and getting that con like knowing how to get that contact and, and manipulate the defense, he's a problem, man, because at see he's a true 6'10. And when he's that big, bigs can't guard him. Yeah. But but small guys can't can't guard him either. And he's he's good enough with his handle to protect the ball away from them. And he's good enough to go around the bigger guys. So he as he grows and continues to get better, man, he's gonna be nothing but more of a problem. He he rookie of the year is you could go ahead and chip that thing down this way right now. It ain't going nowhere, but right here to Paolo. Does he remind you of anybody that you that you've seen? I mean, some people say Weber, um, you know, even a little Randall, a little mellow. What what, what do you think? I would say he's a hybrid, man. He's a hybrid. He's like a mesh. You could say so he's got, I don't think on the block he was as physical and as he is as physical and nasty as C Webb was down there. But he a little bit, but I definitely you can you can see some mellow in him because of that. Like I'm telling you, that in-between game between yeah. he's just really starting to really shoot the three. And he shoots it well, but he doesn't. That's not his focus. I think he's adding that as a as a tool, but he shoots it well to be just starting. But like that in between area, man. When he get down there between, he started going into his ISO. He can cook. He can turn his back and back you in. He can shoot turnaround fadeaways, or he can just straight boogie you and get to his jump shot. So that part to be doing that fresh in the door as a rookie, and you don't know anything, and you just you still wet behind the ears, man. Young yeah. fella got some growing to do, and it's gonna be problems when he's do it. And his front court mate has been just as impressive, man. Franz Wagner, as you said, being yeah. able to put the ball on the floor, he's shooting the three well, um, statistically improving across the board from his rookie year, which was also impressive. Um, talk about Franz Wagner, man. What, what do you see as the biggest difference from rookie to sophomore year as he's taking that leap? Man, I think it's just, you know, the team is getting better. And I think he he's he's learned the NBA game. He's adapted and he's gotten better. And I think, you know, obviously, you know, from last year to this year, the NBA has become aware of who he is because coming in, nobody expected him to do what he did and play as well as he did. And this kid, man, I I, I see him having a long, long career being a, a really, really good player for a long time, man. Cause he, he, the biggest thing about him, he, him and his brother, Mo and him, they, they play freaking hard, bro. They mm. play hard all game long. And it's not, it, it's not, it's not, uh, situational it doesn't matter what's going on he plays one way all out and you know what i'm saying when you get a guy anybody that plays hard that's gonna be great but, but like this guy is skilled like you say he can he can initiate he plays point four for us a lot he facilitates mm -hmm. and and at six seven six eight whatever he is he's a nightmare to be able to really because he can see over defenses where he can make some passes that smaller guys can't make and that's what makes him deadly. His jump shot is improving. He's not like a great, great three-point shooter, but he's not scared to shoot it, and he will make it. And I think just just the way that he plays, and he's not afraid of things. He's he's you know a great guy, the great learner, great listener, great great teammate. Doesn't give you any type of problems in that area as far as being a teammate or coachable or none of that. I think between him and him and Paolo, that's the biggest thing, man. Paolo, you don't even like, he's the, he's like, he got, I call him like the, the, the Joe Johnson or the Kawhi Leonard, like the, mm -hmm. the stoic. He doesn't say anything. He yeah. doesn't say like, he might get hyped or pump his fist or something a little bit. But like, other than that, you ain't getting none out of him. It's no cocky. It's no swag talk. It's no, none of this. It's just, I'm about to come out here and straight cook you. And I ain't, I'm getting straight to the business. I'm not playing. I'm not really getting involved in, trash talking to nothing like he he a different kid for this generation to me i ain't seen that it's get, getting right to it man yeah franz franz is very nice man and that that front court tandem is, is going to be ferocious for years to come um how about Mar markel fultz you know the, the floor general he was highly touted coming out of, out of uh out of college uh obviously with the with the physical mental deficiencies he had a slow slow go at it man but he seems to be finding himself in orlando obviously not the the bucket getter that he he was you know touted to be but it seems to be finding some some comfort there in the mid-range using his footwork and and being very crafty and defensively he's he's been pretty good man what's your thoughts on Fultz? yeah markel is like a, he's a key to this team man like i feel like when he came back he put everybody right back in their proper places you know what i'm saying it was like the, the 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 lineup was shuffled and you had guys in that was starting to need to be coming off the bench and and contributing that way when he came back man he 
he he he's a guard. He's selfless to begin with. He doesn't really care whether he scores or not. He just goes out there and tries to play the right way. That's what I love about him. Like he 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 he's happy for his teammates. He he goes out there and gets everybody involved. And he played, like you say, he played defense. You know what I'm saying? And the biggest thing is I think he got that adjustment. He got a chance to come down to Orlando where, you know, the fans are a little bit different than they are in Philly. And it's, it's just yeah, a little yeah. bit easier for you to settle in and figure out what you got going on. And it's going to be more of a support system down here in City Beautiful than trying to kind of like getting on you and being upset. So it was like he had the time. He had the time to get himself right and, and get healthy and figure things out. And I, I I love Markel, bro. Like six four, six five, big guard, play the right way, defends. He he he's another kid that don't say hardly anything. He don't really say nothing, but like his team, he gets along with his teammates. All his teammates love him, and and, and it's, the respect is there. And he and you know he gets along with the coach. So that I think that's one of the biggest pluses about our team. And we got some really good guys. You know they they young and talented. But I don't see the the hard-headed, bone-headed, dumb stuff that goes on sometimes with some kids when they're young. And I think we got a really good group. And then Coach Mosby is, you know, as a young coach, he they they respond well to him. And they I think he he has a good pulse with him. So it, it's, it's a good marriage down here right now. And, and you mentioned Bold Bold to start off the show. Another oh, reclamation oh. project. <laughs> you know, that was a guy Knicks fans were clamoring for when he was trying to find his way out they there. They was right. They was the right to be clamoring yeah, for him. Yeah, man. It seems like on a nightly basis, he's showing you a different highlight, man. What, what's been your impressions of Bold Bold? Listen, I just said all of that good stuff about everybody I talked about. Bold Bold is my favorite player on the team. <laughs> every single, I don't care what, every night, every game, he does something that you're going to turn around and look and say, what the, did, what? Did you just see that? Like, it, yeah. it's crazy, bro. It don't got to be a bucket. It might be how high he plugs a rebound out of the middle of the sky. It just looks mm -hmm. crazy. And then for him to do that, he'll he'll pluck a rebound, one hand, come down. First thing he do, wrap it behind the back and go smooth, run up. He's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and like... The dude doing Euro steps, dunking, wrong leg, wrong going. Like, man, he, listen, every game, he does something to wow you. And, like, I I, lo I love the kid's personality. I love, like, because he's another kid. Quiet as a mouth, barely won't talk. Shy, mm. don't want any of the attention. You know what I'm saying? And it's yeah. just like, bro, like, you are unreal. Like, to me, it's like they giving all of this talent, and rightfully so, Victor Wimbanai is going to be unreal. But, like, this kid is Victor Wimbanai right. before him. Right. He's, right. Like, where is his respect? Like, yeah. he's a video game. He's a creative player on a video game. The things he do, does on, out there on the court is not real. Man got crossovers, handles, like, Euro steps, whatever. He be doing everything out there. Everything that anybody else could do, he could do. It, it, it's crazy, man, because I always talk to uh, Chuck D, Rhyme Animal Chuck D. He's always like, yo, we need to go get Bo Bo, man. I'm Shout out Chuck D, man. Know, he just man. tweeted earlier, like, yo, we getting, I'm like, yo, the legend. You he know, did. That's the he man. Did. You know, Chuck was on stage at the Grammys tearing it down, man. As soon as he that's got on love. stage, he texted me. He's like, yo, what's going on with the game? Because, you know, Nick's had a big game, big right. win over Philly. So he, he's always tapping into the show, man. Big time right. supporter of the show. So we, we definitely yeah. salute him. Um, yeah, that'd be a real one. Absolutely, man. O on those Knicks, you know, Randall, he's he's coming. This is year four. First year was a down year. Next mm -hmm. year, all-star. Third year, down year. Fourth year, all-star. Back all-star, huh? Back to all-star. And he had the falling out with the fans last year. He kind of kind of melted under that spotlight, man. He got a little too yeah. bright for him. But it seems like he, he's channeled his energy back to the court. And he's, he's a different guy. Again, what's your thoughts on Randall this year, man? Happy for him, man, because, like, you and I talked when all of that happened with the yeah. with the fans and everything, and it, it could have went either way. And, you know, to his credit that, you know, he he went home on the, in the summer. You could tell he worked his butt off, came back in, in really good physical shape looking. And, I mean, then when you look at the game he's put together, he, he's been focused. He's been, in my opinion, he's been mentally tough this year. He, good, bad game. He hasn't done any of that shaky stuff that he's done. I think he learned from that situation that he was in with the fans last year. And I think he grew and he's become better for it. I yeah. think, you know, this year he's had, you know, he, he's had a great year for you guys. Being being named the All-Star was 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 huge and um, he deserved it. But um, I, I think also uh, Brunson. Brunson was a huge help in all of that. I think he... Yeah. He came in and he was kind of like the he was the neutralizer. He kind of settled things down because I felt like in the in the years past, you got RJ Barrett and Julius Randle, you got to keep control of them because they can get out of out of out of hand 
And that's how y'all can, you know, things can go up or down. You know, if they ball, obviously you can go up, but like they can get a little bit away from the game plan and start doing their own thing. Right. But I think Brunson, he came to the team and immediately came, became the adult in the room. He 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 knows how to settle things down. You know what I'm saying? He'll get that ball and slow it down when things kind of getting erratic, and he'll say, "Hold up, like you know what I'm saying? And let me let me get us right." I think he's a great extension of Tibbs out there on the court, and I think because of his presence, it allowed more balance when it comes to those two and their scoring and what they're yeah. doing. Because you you need that sometimes for guys that are really really aggressive, and you know they 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 two of y'all best players, so you need sometimes somebody to be there to separate that and calm things down. And I think Jalen Brunson has been unreal. They I told he had an all-star year. I mean, I wouldn't have, it was, I'm was not mad at him. I, listen, I'm not mad. He was. I'm not mad at him or Julius Randle making yeah. it. But I felt like Brunson, like, in a situation, it's weird because, like, in the summer when they when you guys signed him, I was kind of concerned because mm-hmm. of all of the hype and all of this. And I'm like, damn, like, they kind of putting it on, buddy, like, as if he's yeah. a, uh, you know, like he's a Kyrie type addition, and he's right, not a Kyrie right. type addition, but like that was the hype I felt like that was with it. Now yeah. to Jalen's credit, he's came and he's over, like he he's beat the hype, he's yeah. over delivered in my opinion. He's like I was worried, like damn, you know how New York is, how it could be like if he don't, he had a little stress, yeah. they gonna be right. on his ass, like bro, we got you a hundred million, like but right. like to his credit. He's been straight box office and he's over delivered. And I think he's he's been unreal under whatever. Like he he doesn't see any, any pressure. I think that has a lot to do with, you know, he played high school ball in Chicago. Then he went to play for Villanova. And you know how Jay Wright and that program, they they bring out tough, hard-nosed yeah. kids and tough-minded yeah. kids that that, you know, he's won a championship and been through it there. So I think he's perfect for this team and for New York and for everything that comes with it. Because as you see. I watched it closely, bro. I watched his, his interviews right after being there, and he he mm. said all the right things. He wasn't out there acting big and bad and this thing. He was he was even killed, and he he was he was the way he was supposed to be. He presented right, and now when he showed up, he he's done more than deliver to me, man. He's been unreal for you guys. He's been great, unbelievable, man. I wish he would have made the All Star team. I yeah. get it, you know, it was, it was gonna be hard for them to get two out of the twelve right. players. It's, it's hard to take somebody out, but he, he definitely should have made it. Maybe he'll make it as a as a uh, as an injury replacement. We'll we'll see. But I definitely agree with you because his mental makeup is, is great. It's made for New York, you yeah. know, to be able to handle it. His father went through it. Jalen came up in Chicago, went to Villanova on the J right, as you said, Villanova. They always produce professional yeah. ready made NBA players and just have yeah. that mental makeup. And he's been great, man. He's been great in the, in the Clipper game on um, a couple of nights ago. He had like 13 of the final 15 points in regulation. Last I was night, calling that game on Clipper vision. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You saw it. <laughs> you saw it in the fourth quarter. How he went, he went ballistic, either scoring yeah. or assisting and, and just his ability to operate in the paint and finish in the paint, no matter who's on him, you know, whether you have size or smaller play, bigger plays, his, his craftiness, to finish his footwork, it's just crazy, man. It, it's yeah, just, nah, it's it, absolutely crazy. And it's y'all got a weird situation where y'all three top players are all left-handed, right? And he's the only one who could go right out of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he like the like he like the one who can counter. Like, listen, if I was playing and I had to guard RJ or Julius Randle, I promise you, I'm getting a charge or more a game on them. I'm getting <laughs> at least one charge on them. Because it's like the five, it's like, you know, like on King's Guy, he said, you always come back to that mic. It was one yeah, mic, right. you always come back. I don't care, rain, sleet, snow. RJ and Julius, they coming back, love. You know where they're going to be. You know where they're going to be. Brunson, he he got a little, he got some, he got some, some shuck and jive to him. Yeah, so he can change yeah. it up a little bit. Spins and fades, fadeaways. He, he, he got a lot. Yeah. Them two are coming back. I would be straight here, straight in the town. Yeah. I scream and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the, even in the Clipper game, I saw one play when uh when Mook Morris, he was just waiting on RJ's drive and just <laughs> ripped the ball right out of his hands. I was like, damn. He, he knew that move already from practice. I was like, damn. And it's like, when you look at the three of them, you can see Brunson separates himself with that. He, yeah. he You can't play him like that. You couldn't do him like that at any point in his career, not in college, not at Dallas. Like, you're not doing him like that, but when you watch the mother two, it's, it's, it's funny because you always hear Steve and different people say it, like, they coming back. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't understand how they get busy like they do. I don't get it. It's like, bro, what, like, that's why I be looking around the league like, okay, 
y'all can't watch games no more. Like, we watched all the games. Like, if you just mm-hmm. watch the game, bro, like, he would average one point, like, 1.3 charges per game if everybody watched the games. Yeah. Because he would, he would get one or more a game. He, it's, it's no way. That's a, that's a fact, man. Absolute fact. And, you know, you mentioned his impact on Randall. It was similar to me to when the Knicks acquired Derrick Rose and his impact on the team, just offensively being able to take that pressure off of Julius. The Knicks have been looking for that, 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 you know, Batman slash Robin to play alongside Julius, take the pressure off of him and allow him to be better. I thought D Rose had that impact on them when he first came, obviously, you know, it it wasn't sustainable. Then they went out and got Kemba that didn't work. But now with Brunson, now you got it. You know, you got two all-star players there. He's doing his thing. He's taking the pressure off of him, especially in crunch time. You want the ball in Brunson's hand, not necessarily Randall. And I think that's what's been paying dividends for them, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I think the same thing when you talk about D. Rose, it was that adult presence. You know what I'm saying? That that right. that, that 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 he could he could be the calm in the storm for those guys, for, for for RJ and Julius. And I think like you say you have to have that for those two, for them two to be successful, because they they similar in the fact that they they go getters, they gone. When they get like they they aggressive offensively, they hungry and they after it. So it's like that's nothing wrong with that, with, with guys being like that. You just have to have a, the proper pieces around them that you could channel it correctly. And I feel like, like you said, when D-Rose came in and originally he came in and he, it was perfect. It was like, damn, look how it is when D-Rose get out there. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah, noticeable. Yeah. And it's the same way with Jalen Brunson. When he gets there and now now it's like, all right, chill. And you as a Knicks fan, a guy that watch every game, y'all have to see the difference. Like, it's plays where, like, you might have had quickly come down, pull a whole quick three. It's like none of that happens as often anymore because this kid is getting the ball and he's slowing things up. Whereas in the past, you and I both know it would be different plays where it's like y'all compounding a bad play with another one because y'all going too fast and doing too much too quick. Like, it will slow down a little bit. Yeah. And so now you see you get that and you, like, that that calculates into – one win here that you might have lost because of a bad couple possessions in a row. Like those type of things stop big runs and you know what I'm saying, help yeah. you sustain leads and not not give up the lead when you are doing crazy things because it's getting too erratic. He calms that storm. And I think that's 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 priceless for you guys. True indeed, man. And we're talking to Quentin Richardson, former Nick, one half of the Knuckleheads podcast, also covers the Orlando Magic for Bally Sports Florida. Um, let's take a look at some of these matchups in this game, Q. For me, my matchup of the week got to be Julius Randle and Paolo Boncaro, man. The two go-getters for, for each respective team. Both power forwards play at a very physical level. Uh, as you said, Boncaro getting to the line, an impressive seven attempts per game. Julius Randle as well. How do you see these two guys matching up in this game? I, mean, I think it's a good matchup. I, mean, I think this is a uh, you know good little good little barometer for for Paolo. I know yeah. I know he's gonna come the same way, man. This kid, you know, that's what I love about him. He doesn't, you know, no matchup is too big. He doesn't shrink or, or anything. He, he he presents the same. He doesn't seem you know like up down here. He's an even kill guy. I love that about him. That. His emotions don't kind of run him. He just he just plays. He doesn't get really angry or really upset or really too happy. None of those things. So for me, I, I think this is a good measuring stick, man. This kid, uh, Julius, is obviously a now a two-time All-Star. You're about to be matched up against an All-Star, and um, this is a great opportunity for him. But I, I know Paolo, man. Paolo, he's not looking at it personally. He's gonna go out there and ball and, and not let the game come to him how it comes, and whatever happens, happens. But he'll be ready. What have you seen in terms of how other teams are, are trying to kind of take take him away from his strengths, like so far? I mean, obviously, you know, he started out gangbusters, killing everybody, and then they, you know, they started to adjust. It was two things that happened when he had his ankle injury. He went out for about four or five games or whatever, and it was like at that point, because in the start of the season, Franz was kind of lost, you mm-hmm. know, because he came because Paolo came in, he came so strong, and it was just like. You could see the players like, damn, everybody was like, this dude cold. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like, so everybody had to kind of kind of adjust to that. And you it took like Franz a little longer because he went from last year dominating the ball, having the ball all the time, doing kind of everything for us to like Paolo came in and he was so good. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was no beef, it was no friction or anything. It was just like Franz, you could just see his wheels turn, like, how do I fit in around him? 
Mm. Because this kid is so good. I don't want to mess him up, but I got to figure out. And it was like once Paolo went out for those games, Franz got a chance to step back to the forefront. So then when Paolo came back, it was like, okay, now it's both of us. It's not just mm-hmm. that way. And now you now they kind of pro- progressed from that point, and now they moving like that. And it got better. But, like, from the beginning, I felt like Franz was like, yo, he came in. It was like it was, he was so good, so fast. And it was like, don't nobody want to mess him up. Because it's not like I said, he wasn't being an asshole. He was a great teammate and everything. But he was – you saw how he started to see, and it was like, damn. And yeah. so – Everybody kind of had to adjust to that. But now I feel like, you know, with, with, with us getting healthy, we just got Jonathan Isaac back, which is a, a huge, huge piece is going to be good for us going down. It's like now we got all these players getting healthy, and now it's like we got a full complement. So I'm excited to see, you know, from this point and all-star beyond with guys getting healthy and even going into the summer where we could try and hopefully finish the season with, with everybody healthy and know that we just got a summer of guys going to get better and not trying to rehab an injury and rehab this, but like guys just getting better and hopefully guys link up in the summer and do that whole thing and come back. And next year, man, you never know, man, next year could be, could be some serious things going down down here in city. Beautiful. I'm excited. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Going to be interesting to see, you know, Bon Carroll against the Knicks front court, Knicks missing Mitchell Robinson. So their paint defense Ooh, has been a big got no block miss monster. Right. No, no we block miss monster. Cool now. Right. No block that's miss good monster. news for us down here. Cause that, hey, listen, I, I'm a big Mitchell Robinson fan, bro. I love, yeah. I love his game and I love what he brings to the table. And I, especially, obviously, in today's game, the way it's played, Live threat, shot blocker, athletic big, just, you know, not really going to need the ball, allow you to play freely in that 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 up and down type of game you need. Like, I feel like he he's going to get a whole lot of money for a long time. Young fella yeah. going to get big boy bags for a long time. With that athleticism and that activity, he going to get paid. Yeah, his impact on the offensive boards. I mean, outside of the Knicks win against the 76ers, they've been losing a second chance points battle in almost every game since he's been out. So uh, he, he's been a big void in, in the front court. I'm curious to see how the Knicks match up size wise with the Magic because they've had some issues with bigger teams. That Clipper team gave them some challenges on, on the offensive end. Toronto was a tough matchup for them. And now with the Magic, you got Fultz at 6'4. You have a big front court with with uh with Paolo, with Franz. You have Wendell Carter in the middle, you know, coming off the bench. Damn. You got you got Isaac and and uh and 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 Mo Wagner and things of that nature. I'm curious to see how they match up size wise with the Magic. Magic do a fairly good job of protecting the paint number six in the league league in terms of points in the in the paint um and the Knicks are a uh, top team in, in terms of scoring points in the paint so I'm curious to see what gives there yo I'm telling you this like you gotta be on a what like Wendell Carter he's like he's like a throwback 90s power forward he's like a like a like a uh Otis Thorpe Horace Grant type power forward that he <laughs> plays center like that's who I liken him to he he's a hard hat bring his lunch pail blue collar type dude love Wendell Carter but like the person who might give y'all real problems knowing that Mitchell Robinson is out and the things you just said about the, the paint and the interior, I'm telling you, bro, Mo Wagner. Mm. This dude plays so hard and he comes in and wrecks the game. He's a dude, he's gonna he's gonna rub somebody the wrong way. He's yeah. gonna piss yeah. somebody off because nobody wants to play against that dude who just plays like a bat out of hell the whole game. He don't care. You can elbow him in the face. He going to eat it and run through it and just, yeah, he he never stops. He's the antagonist. He's going to rub. I guarantee you he's going to get under somebody's skin and he's going to rub them the wrong way. Like, I, I I can just remember playing against guys like him. He He's always physical. He's hitting, bumping, bowing, pushing, and he's just playing so damn hard that you're going to turn around at some point and just want to slap him like, dude, <laughs> like sit your hands down somewhere. He's one of those guys, and he's the guy that you love to have on your team, but you hate to play against him. You hate playing against him in practice. He's the guy that when you in practice, you go, you know, someone is you just like, oh, I ain't got it. Here he come. <sighs> you just get, you, you want to take him out because he, yeah. He, he is relentless. He's not going to stop. He don't care. Then he'll say stuff. He'll say stuff. He'll snarl at you. He'll scream. Mm. He, he, doing, he is going to be a game wrecker every time but because his motor. Mm. People don't want to deal with a motor like that. When you get guys that just constantly, constantly, like you just see it when you watch games, like look at this dude. Like those guys aggravate plays, and that's what he's going to do. 
Mo Wagner, a big piece of that Magic bench. What's your overall thoughts on that Magic bench? You know, they've moved Cole Anthony to the bench. You got mm-hmm. Wagner, you got Jonathan Isaacs coming back. Uh, Jalen Suggs come, coming off the bench there. You might go with a little bull bull. And then conversely with the Knicks, their bench has been playing a little bit better as of late. Uh, uh, IQ, manual quickly to, to start yeah. to start that off. Miles um, McBride had a good game against Philadphia. Yeah. A couple threes big in the, in the fourth quarter. Isaiah Hartenstein, who I would say is I like him. Quickly. To a, to a Mo Wagner has been playing much. I can see bad. them. I can see them right. bumping heads a little bit. From a bull, I man. wouldn't be surprised by that. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's been your impressions of that that match of bench? I love it, man. Like you say, uh, we got a lot of pieces, man. We got the OG vet T Ross, who who, who, who a thirty yeah, ball waiting to happen, and get hot as anybody in the league at any point. And then, like you say, you go up and down, man. We got a we got a whole bench of guys. It's just you know we just starting to get healthy, but we got a full complement of players that could possibly start, you know, possibly play big minutes and be rotational guys on other teams. So I think you know Gary Harris is a guy who played great in the league for a long yeah. time. Two way player can can defend really well. So I, I think you know that it's just great to see that the, the coach Coach Mosley is getting his full compliment. And like, it's kind of like, I'm looking at him like, man, you don't even know what to do with yourself. Cause you ain't had this situation where you got all of your players, everybody's healthy and you got to figure out who's yeah. going to play and who's not. Cause it was usually like guys on minutes restrictions coming back or this guy can't play yet. So it's like now, now he really gets his full compliment and to his credit, man. It's not easy to show up like that with guys out of the lineup or not knowing who can play and then being hamstrung by only being able to play guys a certain minute, amount of minutes. And mm. we show up every night with an identity, bro, as a team. We show up as a defensive-minded team. He coaches up the defense unbelievably. That's what that's what I feel like he hangs his hat on is, is defensive end. And we show up no matter who's in the lineup, bro. And, like, they respond to him. You don't see guys talking crazy or not you know, respecting him and all of those different things. Like you see in some situations across the league, he has the respect of the team. Those guys play hard for him, one through whatever number we got. They all come in, they do their job, and they respectful. So, like, to me, that's a huge credit, especially in today's game with the way things are going. And when you see a young guy come in and he commands the respect of the whole team and he gets them to play hard, like, that's the biggest thing. It's one thing to have respect and to, you know, whatever, have a good relationship, but those guys go for him. Like, we win games where we shouldn't win because guys are trying hard. They're giving that extra effort. You know, in the NBA, it's 82 games. It's going to be, however, 8 to 12 games that you could win or lose just by showing up and putting forth that effort because other team don't want to tonight as a collective. You know what I'm saying? It'd be Uh those games and those nights, and I feel like those are the games that we could win because I know that we're going to come – me sitting there calling the game or talking about it pre halftime or, 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 or after the game, it's only been one time this year where I was like, we didn't bring it. Mm. That happened. I, I can only recall saying that one time. And it's like, hey, that happens in the league. And if we only got one or two of those, we right there where we supposed to be. Because the, every team in the NBA has a handful or more of those games where they lose because you hear the coach yeah. come out, we just didn't have it. We didn't have yeah. it tonight. We yeah. didn't, whatever. So we only had one of those games that I could really recall, and we got it. We got our ass kicked. But like, we only had one number. We the same team that we are three and one against the best team in the NBA. We own Boston. Mm-hmm. I can't. I cannot yeah. tell you how, why, or three. what, but we own them three yeah. straight. Bop, bop, bop. Well, it was like it was. It was talk going into the games. Yeah. And it was like, nah, it didn't matter. It was like, what is happening? Like, I'm looking at Dante Martin, too, like, wait, what? why we got their number like this? Like, they tried to win tonight. It wasn't like they yeah. were just shit. Like, nah, we own the best team in the league. Know. Yeah, you, you just never know, man. But as you said, your effort will carry on some nights. And, and I even felt like even in the Knicks' losses to the Magic last year, a lot of it, was as you said, you know, Magic just wanted it more. They out hustle, out muscle yep. the Knicks, especially the the losses at, at MSG in in the early parts of the season. It just felt like the the effort was uh was greater. And sometimes that that's all you need to get those wins, man. So as you said, statement wins against the Celtics. They, they beat the World Champs twice, Mavs, yeah. Phoenix. So definitely some quality quality wins on the on this uh on this Magic campaign. And when we're talking to Quentin Richardson. So to everybody in the chat, hit that thumbs up button for your boys. 
boys. Quentin Richardson, one half of the Knuckleheads podcast, also covers the Orlando Magic for Bally Sports Florida. And Q, going around the league, man, we are close to the February 9th NBA trade deadline, but uh, the Nets and Magic and Mavs made a splash just a few hey. days ago with Kyrie Irving joining Luka Doncic and with the Mavericks in exchange for Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, and a number of draft picks, man. Break this thing down, man. What was your reaction when you first heard the news? You knew it was coming. You knew something was coming after the trade demand because I felt like I, uh, not because he, you know, not because Kyrie was making a demand. I just felt like, oh, yeah, it's time for the Nets to just, just be done. Like, how much can, you know, one organization or one team take one situation? So I felt like that was Something was going to happen. Didn't know where. I thought it was going to be the Lakers. I honestly thought it was going to be. I thought Thank somehow, you. some way that it was going to happen. He was going to get there. And I felt like they was going to probably throw everything at it. But clearly they didn't. That 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 Shark Tank guy, Mark Cuban, slid <laughs> in the back door. Shout out to Cube. Shout Shark out to Tank. Cube and Nico Harris. Yeah. You know, they slid in the back door and got the job done. So, you know, they did that. And it's like now you about to see. A backcourt with Kyrie and Luca, boy, I don't know what's about to happen. All I know that's 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 a whole lot of whole lot of coming that whoever got to try and check that. Yeah, if they can figure out how to like share the sugar and mess with each other. I don't know what to say about the competition. They because all they really need they they got, they got Javale McGee over there right as a big. Yes, yes, they should play him. When <laughs> they should play him more, right. and then. Cause they that's the only thing I, I don't like about their team. They they not big enough. They don't have that mm-hmm. presence inside to me. Right. And then the out, outside before they just made this deal, that was the help. I felt like Luca needed a superstar with him, another star. Yeah. Like no disrespect to Dan Witty, no disrespect to Tim Hardaway Jr. Love both of them guys, but it was like for 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 Dallas for the last couple of years, it would be Luca. And then it like it was a it was a it could be anybody. It might be Spence tonight. It might be Tim tonight. Uh, now Christian Woods might have a good game, but like you need that 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 solid guy who's gonna be all right. I can get thirty with you every night if I want to. Right. Like you know what I'm saying. And it's like now shit. Now you look at it and it's like Kyrie is that's good. You know what I'm saying. They both on the same planet as as far as talent. And so if they able to figure that out and you know share the ball because you know. Obviously, Kyrie can do it. He's done That's it with right. KD. Right. So you've seen that. He's done it. All he has to do is just figure out, and they get their chemistry together. And it, 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 listen, but that that Luca ain't nothing nice. We all see that. He giving yeah. the world the business, and it's 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 pretty damn easy. It's he's doing it like it's pedestrian, dog. Mm-hmm. Like smiling. I'm talking. About, this is what I know. Did the rest of the league can't mess with him. Like when I'm talking to my partners and we talking, we on the patio kicking him and we watch, we like, bro, look at him though. Like the whole situation the other day when he getting into it with us, like all of that, like you know this. I know the league that I played in. We looking, somebody looking at, oh yeah, I can't wait to play him. Like yeah, watch right, how right. I do him. Like he all look how he out here acting. Like <laughs> he come in night after night with the same energy. He yeah. laughing at people, he snarling, he doing oh, he little antics. Little. He looking at people, he looking at benches, he looking at the crowd, yes. fans, let a celebrity be there. He looking at them like, nah, Light he work. doing what he want around here. It ain't nobody that could do nothing about it. Nobody can't do nothing about it because if they could, it had been done already. Yeah. He doing yeah. whatever he want, however he want, and he telling you I'm going to do it. I'm watching him, it's snarling, yeah. it's smiles, it's little, it's little antics. It's like, nobody ain't put him down. Nobody ain't going to okay. try to do it. Like, yeah. man, listen. In our league, we the fi- we somebody. It would have been a scuffle. It would have been a scuffle by now. It would have been a scuffle because the way he doing people, that got to touch your heartstrings personally at some point. Yeah. Somebody got to take a personal problem with that and be like, hold on, man, hold on. You just not gonna keep like a, a shove or something. It ain't, it ain't been none of that, bro. And he's yeah. doing this every day, every game. Every yeah. game you see Luca, you watch the highlights of a Dallas game, you're gonna see Luca talking, smiling at something, at some point laughing or saying, doing something demonstrative after he scored. Every game. Ain't yeah. nobody checked him yet. Cause Elite you can't control it, man. Elite <laughs> trolling. And he backs it up. That's you know? what I'm saying. Ain't nobody checked him yet because you can't. That's yeah. a bad boy. He's bad. If you He's if somebody man. could check him, somebody would make their name off him. Right. If you go lock him up like Luke Dort. 
Lou Dort, the one dude who he came, I saw, I saw Luca come out after the game and he had a bad game against him. And he spoke on like, hey man, look, hey. He was he, like, Lou Dort, the one dude I think that then gave him a problem. That I seen on the record, that I could call off hand, that I seen on record that Luca said it was a problem, and if you watched the game, it was a problem. Mm-hmm. He the only one I seen. It, it, I can't call it, nobody else. It's crazy. I think um, I like to trade for Dallas. I just felt like, you know, it was desperate times for them. They needed a guy, as you said, they competing in the West. The West is wide open right now, in my wide. opinion. With Steph Curry's nagging injuries, Golden State coming back. The Pelicans was on top. Now they coming back. You know, Denver's strong, but you just never know with them. The West yeah. is wide open. And so he needed that next guy next to him. We'll see how that goes. I think they still need to upgrade on their perimeter defense. We're losing Finney Smith. I think that was big. As you said, their front court defense needs a little bit of work. Yeah. Dwight Powell a little bit small. They do have JaVale McGee. He's serviceable. But, you know, Kyrie has that experience. He played with LeBron. He played with KD. I I don't think he should have any problem playing with Luka. So we'll nope. see how, how that dynamic works. But Cuban had to pull a move like this. And based on all of, you know, the, the histrionics with Kyrie and everything that was going on off the court, Dallas was able to swoop in. Like you said, the Shark Tank, he was able to go in and get hey. a discounted deal because at, at Kyrie's game, if you just take his game at the surface level, that's a premium player. That's a Donovan Mitchell type of tr- trade package that you got to put together. But the Mavs didn't have to do that. They got him They got him on a discount. So I thought it was the right move, the right risk for Cuban to make. I don't know what Brooklyn does, man. Man, listen, Brooklyn had to Brooklyn had to do what they had to do. They want I feel like I feel like the Brooklyn Nets, their game plan was like, number one, we gotta get rid of him at all costs. And then reading the little tea leaves and some of the stuff is out there. Number two was like, he ain't going to the Lakers. That's what it sounded like. So it was like, get rid of him by any any means necessary. And then the second caveat is that we ain't sending him there because we know in his heart of hearts that's where he wanna be. Right, right. So it was like, they won. They got up, and then it's like, you know, if you're looking at, especially, then you look at Dallas from the Dallas part, Dorian Finney-Smith was already in trade rooms. He was rumored to be being yes, shot. Yes, so that's yes. somebody they was about to come up off of. The thing with Spence was like, it's cool, but it wasn't the greatest case scenario because, it, like I said, they still was looking for that that other guy for Luka, and it was like it was a, every other night it might be this guy, this guy, this guy. Like, Spence was definitely not a bad choice there, but it was like, if we could make a move, we would make a move. And if if that has to be part of it, okay. It's not life. It's not not like the end of end of life for them. So I feel like they let go of things that they probably would have ended up letting go this trade deadline or this summer or soon anyway because they had to tweak their team. So for Dallas, that's why I say Cube in the Shark Tank. He came all the way up. He didn't really <laughs> like to get Kyrie. Like even if like for all intents and purposes, if Kyrie leaves and doesn't sign back. We still won because we were going to get rid of those things, and now we'll just go retool and really look for the piece that we need to be next to Luke if it can't right. be him. But, like, we shooting our shot at one of the best dudes on the planet, and if we could work it out, we won. Uh, Q, the, the spread for this Knicks and Magic game, Knicks seven-and-a-half-point favorites, man. Give me a score prediction in this one to I'm, take us home. I'm, I'm 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 terrible with that. I, like, I don't <laughs> bet. Like, you know how betting has become huge? I yeah, don't know yeah. the unders. The I don't... I say win or lose. I don't know who. I don't know about the, the, the spreads and this and that. Like, I would be terrible in Vegas. That's why I, I don't gamble. I don't bet. I keep my yeah. money in my pocket. I bet push-ups when I do bet. But <laughs> I, 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 listen, I don't know. I don't know. I tried to play guts when I was a young boy in the league, and I yeah. lost, and I wanted to fight, and that was, like, the message to me. All I lost was some per diem. It was a couple $700, $800, and I was ready to fight, and it was like, yeah, betting and gambling. I'm out cool. of it. Yeah, just stay over here. I watch. I laugh and joke and keep my money in my pocket. But I'm I'm horrible with the spreads and all that, bro. I'm gonna just say the Magic win. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go one ten, one hundred five. I'll say the Magic cover the spread, but I'll go with the Knicks uh, uh, winning this one, man. So we'll we'll see what happens, man. But Q, definitely appreciate all the time, man. Anything upcoming on, on Knuckleheads? Anything you want to preview with the fans? Man, you know, we just gonna keep doing it like we do it. I will say, man, we got one of my favorite players of all time. Like, it was once upon a time where, obviously, I'm from Chicago. Mike is always the guy. Yeah. But Dominique Wilkins was right Mm -hmm. there for me for a very long time. And this was an interview that, you know, that I was looking forward to. And we had, you know, we had been trying to get 
we it was always gonna happen, but you know, schedules and things like that. We had a false start a couple times and we finally got it done, man. And it was it was everything I thought it was gonna be. I learned different stuff that I never knew about him. And like for real, like Dominique is all, one of my favorite all-time players. Like he was one of my favorite players growing up and remained that. And then to get to meet him. Like, I met him before we ever did a podcast because, you know, he's been a staple doing Atlanta basketball. And when I was still playing, I was I, I couldn't wait to run up and talk to him and meet him. So mm. he's just a great dude, man. And I think that interview, I think people are going to learn a lot about him. And it's just going to be good to reminisce about a lot of the things he did. Because that, like, Nick was a bad, bad boy, bro. Yeah. Like, when you really take a deep dive and see what he did and the way he did it, he put it down and then a lot of the backstories and stuff, you you just never knew. It was a lot of stuff. Like he's from North Carolina, him and James were the same class. And mm. a lot of the backstories of how they came up and the draft and college. And it's 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 unreal because it was a big deal with him leaving North Carolina at that back in those days, you didn't leave North Carolina to go anywhere. You either went to Duke or UNC. Right, he went right. to Georgia. And it was yeah. like a whole lot of a lot of stuff went into that where like it was it was heavy it was deep i was like i never knew this and so mm. it's like it's gonna be a real good one as far as like learning more about him but then just the stuff you do know celebrating that and giving him his flowers and listening to him and mm. how he talked about some of the you know competitive games you know he played like we, we talked about bernard king how he's he you mm. know pure score type playing against him and mm. some of those just different things like that's the best part that i like about the pod man it's just like me and DB kids in the candy store sitting there just talking to some guys that you couldn't have told me when I was 12, 13 years old that, hey, dude, you're going to be sitting here interviewing Dominique Wilkins. Yeah. There's been times when I finished up a pod and I can't wait to go call my pops. Like, pops, I was just talking to Dr. J. Mm, yeah, that was a big one. That you was know what I'm saying? One. Iceman, yeah. George Gervin. Like, these are yeah. people that, that my pops is like, what? Like, big old Oscar Robinson. Mm -hmm. James Worthy, big game, James. Like we sat, we sitting here chopping it up with these dudes, and they like, you know, they rocking with us. They they yeah. know us. They knew knew our career and all of this stuff. Like to just like, obviously, we play in the NBA. They know you, but it's like to sit here and to really see they know you and they talking about your game. Like, bro, right. it's just like a feeling that you can't even describe. And it's like the best part about it, we not sitting here trying to get them on no clickbait, bro. Right, like, right. We letting them know this all love, bro. Like, I don't care what you do, what you say. If you say something in this interview that you don't like, if you leaving and you on your way home, when you get home, you think about it, you call, we take it out, bro. Mm -hmm. We don't want nothing but all love in this. I don't care what it is. And we try and protect people from themselves. If something sounds funny like that could be taking them, take that out. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? We're not trying to we want that's this true. to be the best thing for you. We want you to tell people about it because that's how we feel. When we do good interviews and we know the people are gonna do right by us, like, hey man, check that, check that out. What I did with such and such, it's gonna be cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how we want everybody to do us. We don't want nobody to yeah. be ah, cringing when ah, I shouldn't have said that. Like, nah, you said something that you thought you felt funny, you take it out because we take know it that it's gonna be enough dope stuff in here that it don't matter what we gotta take out. We're not trying to get no clickbait, no viral in a bad yeah, way type stuff yeah. we only want dope stuff the stuff that's gonna make you and your family and your friends feel good about you we're not trying to paint you in no picture but a great one that's it that's it that's all we don't want you to take no flag for no interview with us or nobody clapping back at you about something like we want it to be all love bro mm. all love and celebration when you come on here we it's enough people out here documenting every bad move or bad misstep or whatever we do wrong so it's like we choose to highlight everything good. We're not stupid. We do know that we're not perfect and there's bad stuff out there, but it's being documented. We don't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's, it's y'all yeah. working overtime on that, so we going to do the good stuff. That's very well put, man. Very well put. And it's something that I try to do on this show as well, man. And, and a great way to end it, man. We started talking knuckleheads and talking knuckleheads, man, and, and war stories from the legends of the game. And like I said, there's nobody doing it like you guys, man. And the production quality is great. The guests are great. Your questions are great, man. So continued success on the journey. And like I said, I appreciate, appreciate all the time you've given us, man, because I know you're very busy. And good luck to you guys tomorrow, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be checking it out. I'm trying to sneak in the building. See, I'm not calling the game no more, but I'm going to still slide up in there. All right, gotta man. We got to holler at my man D. Rose about something. Okay, okay, okay. All right. All right, Q, man. Definitely appreciate it, man. Thanks again. All right, man. Good, good looking, CP. Yes, sir.